stories about water and urban places, this is ID Anthro. Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro. One of the things I like to do with the ID Anthro episodes is show you how stormwater treatment system sites evolve over time. So to revisit sites that we've been to before, seen before, and see what's changed. I recently had the opportunity to do that when I took a trip through New South Wales, eventually and ostensibly to get to the 2018 Stormwater Australia Conference, which we've been talking about over the past couple of episodes. But on the trip down, I went via the Blue Mountains, and in episode 208, I brought to you some information about, or showed to you, described to you, probably waxed lyrical about, because I love them so much, to tell you the truth, some small bioretention systems that Blue Mountains Council have been building. And I love these because of how they've structured the team that builds it and how they're learning on the go and getting great outcomes for very little money. And I'm not gonna wax lyrical about that right now, but you should go and see episode 208 if you wanna know more about how this council or this team specifically, has driven the cost of building bioretention systems completely through the floor and has been doing it quickly and without detailed designs, turning up on site with a broad idea of what they're going to build and then getting it done. Okay, I'm already getting distracted. I'm about to start waxing lyrical about it. That's not the point of this. What I want to do with this episode is just take you for a trip and show you one of them. It doesn't even have to be multiples of them, just one of them a year later. So I visited them in late October 2017, and this is early to mid-October 2018. So first up, here's a photograph of one of these little systems from 2017. It's relatively recently been built, and you can see how it's a little offline bioretention system. Stormwater flows down the channel at the bottom of the shot. There's a diversion to send the low flows into the bioretention system, and then the high flows can bypass it. Recently constructed, much like you'd expect for any recently constructed system. I went back a year later, and this is a shot of the same system from a pretty similar location. What's interesting here is the fact that it doesn't seem like it was ever planted out. This system and none of the ones nearby have any plants in them. There is a little bit of planting around the edges, but not a lot, certainly not mature. It looks like the stuff around the edges is pretty recent. Maybe not like, maybe not really, really, really recent, but quite recent. But there's clearly been no planting in the bioretention filter media. So I'm curious about why that's the case, and I really should do some research to look into it. But what I found is fast found fascinating about this is the fact that it hasn't been planted, but it clearly still drains because there was quite a bit of rain. So we spent two nights in the Blue Mountains. So we came up on the Saturday, and we left on the Monday. So the Saturday night and the Sunday night there. And it rained essentially from the Saturday evening through until the Monday morning. It had just cleared up when I took this photograph. You can, you can see that, you can see the sun out when I took this photograph. But it had rained solidly throughout the Sunday. And yet, this system's drained down completely fine. So con conventional wisdom would be that, oh, if you have a system that doesn't have plants in it, it's gonna be at a bit of risk of, of uh, of clogging up or draining really slowly. Well, this doesn't seem to be showing a lot of evidence of that. Now, it probably doesn't have the largest extended attention depth of any system I've ever seen, but nonetheless, I found it interesting. It's an anecdote. You know, the plural of anecdote is not evidence, or no, the plural of anecdote is not data. Sorry, <laughs> got that statement wrong. Plural of anecdote is not data, but I just like to showcase this. Interesting systems a year later. And the same pattern is repeated for the, the several systems that I went and had a look at. The same pattern is repeated. Weren't planted originally, weren't planted now, aren't ponding water after a day of pretty consistent, pretty solid rain. I'll show you a couple of shots of those to finish. So just one of these things, interesting, take a look. You can, of course, look up, I'll flip it up on the screen right now and I'll put it in the show notes as well. You can look up the Wussard map asset IDs for these and go and visit them yourself, which you absolutely should because they are awesome. And if you want to know why they're awesome, you should look in episode 208. Okay, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.
Before you go, our best episodes come from your questions. This knowledge base, these discussions that are IDN Pro improve with your contribution. So if there's a topic, an idea, a concept that you would like us to explore, come and ask us. You know where to find us. www.idnthrow.com slash contact. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and that place you get your good podcasts from. You know where to find us. We look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you soon.